Ah, g'day my fellow naturalists. Welcome to another episode of Brother Nature. This is Diving Magnetic Island. Now the island is just off the coast of Townsville in North Queensland. It lays in pretty shallow water, so it makes for pretty casual, relaxing diving. Fantastic stuff for those interested in macro, particularly the nudie branches and the shrimps and crabs and all the little you know, invertebrate things like that. Now having said that though, that doesn't mean you should exclude the big stuff. We saw loads of green turtles, heaps of flatbacks and hawksbills, bull rays, eagle rays, uh, leopard sharks, nurse sharks, uh, black tip reef sharks and just general reef species, the big trouts, schools of mackerel and various other pelagic fishes too. Now as you can see from this shot, we've got a new toy, beautiful dive housing for our camera. This was a test drive, so this was her maiden voyage. Uh, we'd obviously been out in the desert for a long time and this was our first diving in months and our first opportunity to take it out and get accustomed to it. And I've got to say we're loving it. Uh, as you'll see from the footage here, it allows us to take our good camera down instead of just a little GoPro and get some really tight macro. All right, given they uh, feature so dominantly in this episode, I have to fill you on nudie branches. They're a sea slug basically, but as you'll see, they're no ordinary slug like you see in your garden eating your lettuce. They come in a myriad of different shapes and sizes and just a plethora of colours. Alright, this is an opportune moment to introduce you to my favourite genus of nudibranches, branches and that is the Philodesmium, commonly referred to as the solar powered nudibranches. branches. This is a pretty cool name actually because as the name suggests they have this cool ability and that is to generate some power and that is with a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae just like coral they have these papillae that you can see on their back which is just an increased surface area to support these algae inside now given they're typically predatory sea slugs going around eating these soft corals as you can see this one is it takes a long time and it is a long trip between feeds so it utilizes the sugars from the zooxanthellae their little algal buddies that then support them between the trips um, as they journey to find a new feed on a different coral which i reckon happens to be a pretty cool attribute it's a cool trick And this is one of his relatives, which is Philodesmium magnum. Now, as you can see from this image here, which is a close-up of those zooxanthellae colonies within the serrata, linking back to the digestive system, which I guess I should elaborate on. They're just these large structures to act like the solar panels, just this big increased surface area so as they can catch enough light to produce energy for the nudie branch. As you can see, this cheeky little remora is trying to adopt me as its new host, which means it's left its former host, usually a shark or a ray. So it catches my curiosity. I start looking into the blue for what it was. The marine environment's pretty famous for what they call commensal relationships. Relationships between these small invertebrates and corals particularly. Now the coral will happily survive without this shrimp. However, the shrimp definitely cannot survive without its coral host, which it obviously gains a lot of security from. No doubt by this point you've noticed how colourful all the nudibranches branches are that you're seeing. This is to advertise the fact more often than not they're poisonous. They utilise the toxins in their food to then defend themselves. This specimen is the flatworm Discodorus. As the name suggests, it imitates a obnoxious tasting flatworm. Therefore, the fish and things just leave it alone. 
This little character is the Zanzibar shrimp, another great example of that commensial relationship. It happens to imitate the polyps of its whip coral host with just absolute perfection. Now some of you may be wondering, what's the word nudibranch mean? Why are they called nudibranches? Well, it comes down to a simple breakdown of their anatomy. Nudie, meaning naked, and branch for bronchi or lungs. So basically translates to naked lungs. But they happen to resemble fish gills. That's them on their back wafting around in the current, as you can see. Now we have another interesting character. This is the epaulette shark, one of the walking sharks. During really low tides, you'll find these in exceptionally shallow water. As long as their gills remain moist, they can sort of breathe and walk around the coral top and swim through very shallow water hunting their crab prey. And if you really want to see them, I recommend being very careful walking over the tidal flats of a night as they are primarily nocturnal. There's actually many groups of nudie branches that don't have their gills exposed. This shieldhead slug is a classic example. Its gills are hidden behind a small flap of skin on its posterior. As you can no doubt tell, the visibility was pretty poor on this dive, which meant we had our faces glued down into the algae looking for nudie branks when this character came along and gave us a bit of a surprise, gently landing right in front of us giving us a bit of a show, but this particular bull ray is probably 1.2 metres in diameter. Another interesting thing about the bull rays is quite often in poor visibility like this situation, if you approach them and you get a bit too close, they'll warn you by loading up their jaw and knocking it three times like someone at your front door. This stunning animal is the tri-lobed or three-lobed T-bar. The footage truly doesn't do it uh, credit. <laughs> the colour coming from this thing is so vibrant and rich. All I can hope is for those divers out there that you eventually stumble across this species. And this little character at first glance looks like a mundane tiny little thing. But at closer inspection, you'll actually see it's one of the most brilliant uh, little nudie branches you can see. And this is the psychedelic batwing slug. Pretty cool name for a pretty cool little uh, critter. As you can see, the pattern and the depth of colour is quite spectacular. And they could also be seen on that purpley sponge in about three metres of water anywhere along the rocky shoreline. Well nature knows, that brings us sadly to the end of another episode. So we'll leave you here with a montage of all the other little things that we found. Also if you find yourself in Magnetic Island wanting to do a dive, I'd highly recommend you go see the lovely guys at Pleasure Divers. They do shore dives and they'll obviously guide you and show you all these cool little creepy crawlies that we found. Although we dive on our own, they were kind enough to fill all our tanks for us and they were lovely about it. Just a cool bunch of characters, very laid back. I'm sure you'd be sure to enjoy the diving with them. Well nature nutters, no doubt you can tell we're pretty new to the YouTube thing, editing, all that stuff. 
We appreciate your feedback. Please leave us some comments below and be sure to like and subscribe. That would help us a great deal. Cheers. See you next time.